Hi, and welcome to this What's New session on the upcoming release of B1 Usability Package 2014.01. My name is Rasmus Wolf Jensen, and I will be taking you through what the major new features are in this release. This is the first release of 2014, and with that in mind, we have changed a little thing about the version numbering. In the past, when we had 6.0 last year, it was version 6.0, 6.01, 6.02, and such, just the version numbering. In 2014, we'll do it a little bit different in that we will now have the numbering being the same as the year, so, and the second part being the month. So, for example, if, when you have 2014.01, it's January 2014.02, and so, so forth. We do this in order to have a more clear uh, numbering system, so it's very easy to see what version this uh, this is and how old it is. It's a really good benefit for, for people who really pressuring your customers to upgrade because as we move along, this number will seem like an old number. So the new versioning number in details is here, where we have the year, we have the month as the two third digits, and should there be need for hotfixes, there will be the last digit. Before I dive into the features of the new release, just a quick word on the SAP versions that we support. So the new package will support Subbusiness 1 9.0, uh, both for MSSQL and for SAP HANA, and both in 32 and 64 bit. So we have a complete unified code base with the same code behind the two versions now. So please note that this version will not run anymore on 8.8x versions. For that, you will still need to use the 6.0 version from last year. First feature I want to share with you that is new in the, the release is in B1 Printer Leary, where we now support the new 9.0 specific features. So that specifically means that we now understand the cancellation marketing documents, so they can be excluded in Master Leary, and when you uh, add them during add events, the crystal reports have been updated, so they know about this cancellation system. And also, for example, in the pick list wizard, the new wizard that is in 9.0, that is now supported for the added events as well, when you create multiple pick lists at the same time. Another highly asked for feature in B1 Printer delivery for this release was the option to have custom report columns. So when you use match delivery of type custom, you would end up uh, only seeing the doc key and BP code here. From this release, if you put more columns into your SQL, the preview will automatically pick those up and put them onto your screen as needed. So much easier to get a sense of what you are actually sending when doing custom reporting. Moving on to the report actions, where again a very highly asked for feature was that in the past you could only set a number in the number of copies, one, two, three, and so on. Now you actually have the full benefit of the dynamic syntax, so you can write SQL to find the, the number of copies based on a business partner, as an example here, or a specific user-defined field on the specific document. It works both on B1 Printer Leary and universal functions of type crystal report. Another module we have updated greatly in this release is the exchange rate. We have added one more source provider, which in this case is Bank of Mexico. And also we have added a new currency converter. And this is the first time we actually also do something with the cockpit widgets. So if you add the cockpit, you can see that you get the currency converter, you can have it as a cockpit widget. But for people who don't like the cockpit, it's also available on the tools from a normal window. Moving on to item placement tool, we have a very big new feature 
that is uh, kind of disruptive, so it's off by default for existing installations. There's more about that in 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 the documentation, but it essentially means that there are two ways now you can use item placement tool when you do right click and place above, place below. For existing installations, it will be pixel based as it is today, where it says move it to this left and top value in here. But if you want to, and for new installations, it will be relative placement. And relative placement meaning that instead items will be placed above or below something else. So you can actually place something above, below, left to, and right to in the configuration directly. So no more calculating of pixels. And what this means is certain scenarios is very easy to make compared to what it was previously when you needed to go in and set, uh, make specific changes. And also, this partly solves the problem with font sizes. So with relational placing, if you run font size 10 or font size 12, it more or less is the same. There's some tiny uh, details, but you can essentially actually use the same configuration on multiple font sizes. Just to point out again, if you have an existing installation and you already have item placement tool configurations, it will still use pixels when you do right clicks. But if you go to the base configuration and turn it into relative placement, it will begin to use it like that. The reason we don't take it into account is that if you mix and match pixels and placement, it can essentially work, but it can become very confusing once you begin to make uh, certain kinds of modifications. So we will have it uh, a slow migration process to start with, uh, with relative placement only for new installations. Another module we have highly invested in in this release is the Master Data Manager. We have the Business Partner Master Data Manager, the Item Master Data Manager, the Document Data Manager, and the Employee Master Data Manager, which all were there in the previous. What's new is that you have some new features in regards to that every one of them have a new tab called Advanced. Because certain localizations and newer versions of Business One always gave a, along new fields that some people wanted to set, while other people didn't want to set them because they weren't in your localization. So we have made the new Advanced system where you can actually get all the properties of the SAP SDK. So if it can be set by the SAP SDK on header level, then you can set it using Master Data Manager. And it further enhances the possibility to, to actually take a value from an existing field, for example, the foreign name, and put it out into another field. So you can have fixed values. You can also do property colon and so one of the other properties, so for example, this will uh, set the additional ID to the same as the card code, if run. And we can also use SQL colon, where you can actually write, specify a SQL with actually also if and else ca cases if needed, where you can specify if these fields are above a certain level, set this value, else set this value. So full control, a little more uh, advanced, but, but still full control for, for those who need it. Also, UDFs have gotten more or less the same features. You can also use SQL colon and property colon for, for those features as well. Another great feature of the Master Data Manager is in the new, new features of Document Master Data Manager, where for the specific document types that are open, you now have the option to make the reverse document. So for example, if you have some invoices and you need to credit them, you can actually create the credit memos directly from the Master Data Manager instead of going each case by case and say copy to. Example again for delivery where you can make the returns and the same goes for the purchase documents. Switching gears again, we now go to Universal Function File Exporter, who also got a new feature. It's called Conditional Syntax. So you have always had the 
option to put in the body in the file exporter. But you could not really specify anything specific in there. You could use uh, for, uh, for each in order to loop two lines. But now you actually have if sentences, so you can actually include or exclude or put different values based on certain values in the, the source data to build up your SQL, your file, uh, whatever you need. We have this syntax. It's of course documented. Uh, but if you use that, in my case, if the balance is higher than zero, this tag would be in the file, else it will not be in the file. Another universal function who have received a lot of new features is, of course, the most used feature uh, in usability packets, which is SQL report. It has basically three new features. Uh, the first feature is that you can use banded row colors, so meaning that every single, every other line have a diff slightly different color, so it's easier to see which line it, it belongs to. The other one is the new 9.0 feature where you can actually make fixed column counts. So it means that the first, second, and third column is now fixed. So no matter how long I scroll out, they will always be in view, while the rest are just scrolling. And the final feature is the new first column is selection checkbox. This is for people selecting data back and at the same time use the format uh, where you could actually make some columns uh, editable. Those were great when you needed to edit something, but after you had edited, you needed to row select using the row header, so they became yellow, and then you could actually first select back. Now with the new checkboxes, you get some benefits in that you can actually make a validation saying when I go out of my editable field, set it to checked based on your conditions if it should be included or not. It could be that if the value is, is zero, then don't include it. If it's above zero, then include it. It also gives you the benefit to have default selections. So in my case, I've only made a very simple Y as checked, but it could be a case uh, sentence saying, if this, uh, if this customer have purchased above so, such and such, set it default as checked, else set it not default as checked. So great new features for the select back system. And in general, a lot of very requested features, so you can actually work even greater with the SQL report. On top of the new features of the SQL report itself, it now also has the option to be used as a cockpit widget. So if you use the cockpit, you now have the option to go down here, drag a SQL report in there, and choose what report you want to show in here. So it's a great way, if you have a static report, you can set up, you show the refresh button, or you can actually set up auto refresh, uh, down here, so you can actually have a widget that, no matter where you are, will always show the latest data, sales data, whatever data you want. So these were the major new features of B1 Usability Package 2014.01. As always, this release is now ready for download at boyom itcom sbo as it's a new version, just some quick reminder of requirements. So the requirement is that you have paid the 2014 maintenance, that you run SAP 9.0 on either MSSQL or HANA, and a new requirement is also the that framework, but installed with 9.0, that is already uh, automatically installed, so no major uh, specific features. Yeah. So with that, I want to thank you for this, watching this video and hope you really will enjoy the new version. Thank you.